Ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. You're listening to the Deal Room Podcast. Join us as we bring you the inside scoop on business sales and acquisitions. Get across trends in the area and hear the industry's best recount their real life tips, traps, and experiences. Now, here's your host, Joanna Oki. Hi, it's Joanna Oki here and welcome back to the Deal Room Podcast, a podcast proudly brought to you by our commercial legal practice, Aspect Legal. Now, today we have on the show a guest that we've had on the show before um, and we've got him back because we had so many rave reviews from those episodes. It is the one and only Nigel Hall from Bonza Business and Franchise Sales. Now, Nigel comes to us as a serial entrepreneur, not just a director in Bonza Business and Franchise Sale, but also someone who has been involved himself at the cutting edge of business sales and acquisitions, having been involved himself in four exits and 22 transactions um, as an angel investor as well in multiple early stage biotech, nanotech and IT businesses. And today we are talking about some of the most common questions small business owners ask when they're looking to sell their business. So this is a really good one for you if you are a small business owner and you're thinking about selling a business or indeed um, if you are an accountant or other business advisor and deal with business owners who are looking to sell their business because we go through some of the most commonly asked questions and of course the answers to them. So without further Further ado, here we go with our discussion with Nigel. Nigel, I just wanted to say a huge thank you for coming on to the Deal Room podcast today. Pleasure to be here, Joe, and great opportunity to speak with you. Fabulous, fabulous. Now, the topic that I wanted to cover today um, is the, the most common questions you get from small business owners who are looking to sell their business, because I find that there are there are a heap of standard sort of questions that um, people who are thinking about selling their business but haven't done it before have in mind, and I thought it'd be really useful for us to have a few answers here ready for them. So, what are some of those top questions? First of all, obviously, people want to know how the market is at the moment. And uh, you know, at the mar- moment, the market's good, but it's always subject to change. So generally, if someone's thinking about selling their business and they've reached that decision, it's always the right time for them to go to market if their business is prepared. And we'll help them prepare so that they are in a position to sell because there's always buyers out there. There's always businesses for sale and you always get transactions done. It's never black and white. It's always a bit of a gray area. Good businesses always sell. And in downturns, people are looking for buyer deals. In upturns, people are looking for deals. It's such a good point. I I think one thing that I throw in there is um, selling your business um, can take a little bit of effort. It's best to do that earlier rather than later because there's nothing worse than a seller who is desperate to sell because they've left it all too long. You know, I just think uh, I think the best profile of a seller is one a seller that's still got a bit of energy left in them for the process. Yeah, I, and there's nothing worse than dealing with a 75 year old seller who says, "I want to retire when I'm 75 and a half because they've lost <laughs> their energy and they just can't want to get out." Uh, and you're quite right. If they would planned it properly and done a little bit of succession planning, and maybe at 63, 64, thought I should probably be moving on and sell my business while it's still humming. Not wait till I'm 75 and I've run it down because I couldn't be bothered or I didn't have the energy for the last 10 years and then still expect the same price. Uh, you do get 75 year olds who are still running their business as well, but at that point they should at least be thinking about taking some retirement and maybe taking a step back. So selling the business a little bit earlier wouldn't hurt. <laughs> and I guess on that note then, um, a lot of people I hear want to know how long it will take them to sell their business. So what's the answer to that? Uh, how long is a piece of string is the correct answer. However, <laughs> <laughs> what we tend to find is if a business is well prepared, uh, priced properly for the market, has good documentation and provide the documentation on a timely basis to their broker, that they should really be looking at somewhere between three and nine months. Because even if you find a buyer early with due diligence, finance, legals, et cetera, it's still going to take two months to get it over the line. So three months is a minimum, nine months sort of in that range, and it, but it can take 12 to 18 months. The thing is, uh, 
buyers it come in and out of the market all the time. And that one buyer who looks at your business and goes, that's the one for me, particularly if it's niche, may not be looking when you're wanting to sell, but they will be looking in, the, in their time period. So advertise broadly, stay on the market, keep updating your financials, keep updating your figures and keep the business running as if you're going to keep it forever and don't let the performance drop and you'll find a buyer. Love it. That's really good advice, Nigel, really good advice. So what are some other common questions that small business owners ask? You know, obviously, what is the business worth is one of the first things we deal with. Well, that's um, a huge one, isn't it? Yeah, yes, it is. I, I hear that question a lot. Yeah, yeah people haven't got a clue uh, quite often or they've got an idea because they've spoken to one of their friends or they've just come up with a number. Uh, so getting a, an appraisal done by your broker is, is really key before you go to market. So you've got a realistic expectation of where it will sit in the market. And you know, that's, I think that is really, really important because you can waste a lot of time finding out what the market value of your business is. And, if, and time is our most precious commodity in life. So let's not do that. Let's find a decent, the sensible price for the market, get a, a fair appraisal and move the business as quickly as possible because it's your time at the end of the day as a seller. So I guess next to how much is my business worth, how many people are concerned about the saleability of their business and whether their business is saleable at all? Well, quite often this is, we all speak to people and they'll say, oh, look, I don't think I'll ever find a buyer because it's too niche or because... You know, it's not big enough or it's too big or and they just don't have that confidence. What we do find is there's an awful lot of buyers out there, an awful lot of buyers. And we're, we're servicing 2,000 plus buyers per month who are interested in buying businesses. So there's a lot of demand out there, but finding the right match is key, which is where using technology sometimes can help you match businesses, buyers to businesses and having that overview. But also you know, for every business, and this is something we, we can never say that business won't sell. I've looked at businesses in the past and thought that's going to be so difficult to sell. And it's been one of the quickest transactions we've done. Particularly niche businesses where you think, wow, well, you know, how many people are going to want to buy that business in that location? And then all of a sudden, there you go. It's, it's sold within three months. So I think it's, it's all about preparing the business, making it so that when the buyer does find it, who may be you know, quite a unique buyer, that it's fairly priced, well prepared, good documentation, and then you can take it from there. Brilliant. Okay, wonderful. Um, and so what are, what are the other top questions that you're fielding? Um, who's buying? That's one of, you know, who's buying these type of businesses? And obviously, depending on the size of the business, there'll be different buyers available. Uh, we've seen a lot of movements in regional areas around these 491 visas, uh, where we've got people who are resident in Australia at the moment on a temporary visa, buying businesses to obtain a full-time visa. And that's buoyed the market in the smaller end and in the regionals. Uh, but we're also finding a lot of corporates looking to expand at the moment, buying other businesses that are in that four, you know, two, three, four, five, six million dollar bracket because they feel comfortable and re expanding their regional uh, footprint. So that's other type of transactions we're seeing quite a lot of. But there's lots of buyers out there. There's every type of buyer, and you know, I can't emphasize enough. There's a buyer for every business. I think. So, I mean, that's super important information uh, because I, I've actually spoken to business owners in the past who have felt that there's not going to be a buyer for their business and then close their doors. And that's a really sad, you know, that's a sad state of affairs if if indeed the reality is there may have been a business for them in the market. I think the, the real problem with that as well is those people are providing a service in society. And that skill set they've got and the business they've got needs to be continued to fill the gap and provide that service. And then you're losing skill sets and you're losing businesses that really do need to be continued. So finding that buyer is actually important for the social network within regional towns and cities because some of those skill sets are then lost forever. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, completely, uh, I'm completely with you there. One, one of the other questions that um, – that buyers that I speak to have on their mind is costs. What costs should they expect? And what 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 are those sort of costs that they should be considering? Well, first of all, obviously, when you go into a business to set up a business, you spend money. So when you exit a business, you're going to have to expect to spend money because it's you know, no one's going to want to do it for free. Uh, obviously, advertising is really key to these buyers, to sellers, because if you're not advertised broadly, 
then people aren't going to see it. And if people don't see that your business is for sale, then you're not going to sell your business. So advertising is key. And if and you've got to expect to pay for advertising because it costs money. Also, preparing documents takes time, and they've got to be expected. They've got to expect to pay that. Or if they think everything's for free, then you know, in life, everything that's for free tends to have very little value uh, and very little quality. So, paying something up front to make sure everything's done correctly and you get great advertising, great documentation, is important. But then, obviously, everybody charges a commission at the end, and that commission should be fair to reflect the amount of work a broker does, and but also affordable. So that if you are selling a hair salon for $100,000, you're not paying $30,000 in fees to a broker because you're still going to need a lawyer at most times. You're still going to need an accountant to advise you and you still have some tax to pay. So keeping your transactional costs managed by using people who want to sell a lot of businesses to deal with legals for a lot of businesses and using experts in that space, managing your cost is really key at that point. Because at the end of the day, a lot of the people we deal with are actually going into retirement. And if we can save them thirty, fifty, eighty thousand dollars on their transactional costs by doing a good job and making sure everything's managed, then that's eighty thousand extra in their super fund. And that's important to us. Yeah, yeah absolutely right. You know, um, and that makes a lot of difference at the end of the day, potentially to someone's retirement when um, when they can take those saved costs. And it's not just about costs as well. It's, it is also about that emotion at sale and making sure you're, you know, as sellers, you, you're following a process that is going to work rather than wasting time because there's a lot of emotion in a sale. There's a heap of emotion if you're putting a business on the market and never being able to find a buyer because it's not the process hasn't been dealt with uh, properly. Absolutely. Brilliant. Okay, well, wonderful. Look, I think we've um, taken a good run through all of the questions. But before we go, maybe if you could also just give us a couple of pointers on um, our sellers who are after a quick sale or who want to set themselves up best for a time-effective sale, what should they be doing? Obviously, price. Price is the key. Now, people, some people think, oh, a low price will help me sell quickly. Some people think, hey, I want to maximize my price. Pricing to the market is actually the right thing to do. I hate to see a deal go to market underpriced because it says to the to the buyer, this business is in, has got issues. It's got problems. Uh, so businesses that are underpriced perform as badly as businesses that are massively overpriced. So finding that range, and there's always a range because there's no one price, uh, but working then and listening to the buyer feedback not all of it, but if there's qualified buyer feedback, somebody who's actually taken the time to have a look at the business, do due diligence, and they come back and say, look, it's just not quite worth that. I'm not going to get the returns. Then you've got to listen to that feedback. Uh, it's not, a, but again, you know, it's, there's a fair price and there's a price where you as a seller have got to know that's what I'm prepared to accept. That's what I'll walk away with. And it's good to know that early because as you mentioned, you can miss a deal because you start off thinking, well, I'm definitely going to get $300,000 for business. You've been told it's worth 200. You get an offer for 220 and you say, no, I'm going to stick it out for 300. Know that walk away number from day one, because that's what you need to negotiate to and accept that when you get that offer. You know, nobody wants to push the price down and sell cheaply, but both parties do want value. And you've got to create win-wins in business sales. So having a walk away value is key. I think find that out when you start selling your business and you'll get a much better result. I think that's that's a really that's a clever comment. And I guess when when the, the additional comment is just make sure you're taking the right advice on to work out what that walk away price is. Don't don't um be tempted by the promises um, in the market from people who are just telling you that you might be able to get a certain amount that isn't really realistic on the market because that can do a, a heap more damage than um, than benefit. Well, and people often say, oh, the business owes me this much. And you go, well, the business doesn't owe you anything. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or I need this amount from the sale. There's another one that I've heard uh, that need your need is not going to drive any buyer's um, a opinion of what your business is worth. So I guess they're, they're key things to stick away from. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Brilliant. Well, look, wonderful, Nigel. Huge thank you for coming onto the show today. Um, if our listeners want to connect with any of your brokers, how do they go about doing that? Obviously, visit our website and you'll give them the link afterwards or call us on 1300 266 922 uh, or SMS us off our website. Brilliant. Nigel, just a huge thank you for coming onto the show today. Thank you, Joanne. Pleasure as always. Well, that's it for this episode of the Deal Room Podcast. We hope you're now primed for your next deal with these pointers and have enjoyed these fascinating insights. Now, if you'd like more information about this topic, then head over to our website at the Deal Room Podcast. Dot com, where you'll be able to download a transcript of this episode, as well as access any contact details and any other additional information we referred to in today's podcast. Now, if you'd like to get in contact with our guests today and the services they offer, you can go ahead and check out our show notes for a link right through to them and their details. You can also book in directly with our legal legals at Aspect Legal. If you'd like to soundboard your next steps, discuss a legal question, or find out more how we can assist, whether that's with buying or selling a business, or perhaps somewhere in between. Now, don't forget to subscribe to The Deal Room Podcast on your favorite podcast player to get notifications whenever a new episode is out. We'd also love to hear your feedback, so please leave us a review and rating if you're already one of our subscribers or even if you're listening to this podcast for the very first time. Every review helps our team produce valuable content for you. Well, thanks again for listening in. You've been listening to Joanna Oki and the Deal Room Podcast, a podcast proudly brought to you by our commercial legal practice, Aspect Legal. See you next time. I am so very excited to announce that I've hit a non-podcast related milestone and released a book. You might wonder why? Simple. I wanted to help business owners understand the mechanics of deal making and the interaction between three critical phases of business, acquisition, growth, and exit. And so I am very happy to announce Buy, Grow, Exit, a guidebook for business owners and their advisors on how to buy, grow, and guess what, exit in a way that maximizes value and avoids landmines along the way. The book is available now, so just head over to buygrowexit.com.au to get your copy and to access a whole heap of free resources that will really help you on your journey of acquisition, growth, and exit in your business or in working with your clients. Also check out our show notes where we will link straight through to that page. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen. that will conclude this evening's entertainment. Thanks for listening to the Deal Room Podcast. To find out more about this episode and other episodes in the series, check out the show notes or head over to our website at thedealroompodcast.com.au. Oh.